Hello, that's my school, and I'm about to do this video from up here. Just this will be my first video from outside. I know I'm just showing the roof, but let's go to the paper. And before I get to the paper, this is me, that's my face right there. And I'm about to do a paper, some, some, I'm about to do some solutions for this paper of uh, science 2. 5124 for the year 2018. So let me get to question one of section B of science two uh, for the year 2018. This is actually our uh, chemistry. So that's our paper right there, and um, this is our year paper 2018 science 5124. Question one. Give two reasons why chemistry is important to industry. There are many reasons, man. There are many reasons, but among them, manufacture of paints, manufacture of uh, drugs, analysis of uh, chemicals, you know, manufacture of insecticides, which are, I would say are part of drugs, manufacture of polymers. Chemistry is widely used in industry, but those are some of them. Number B, state any two laboratory safety rules. Put on closed shoes. No eating or drinking in the lab. And then uh, number two there, um, name the method of separation used in each of the following processes to obtain liquid oxygen from liquid air, that's fraction distillation. B, to obtain sodium chloride crystals from aqua sodium so, uh, chloride, that's crystallization. Okay, to find out it, if certain food dyes are safe for human consumption, that's chromatography. To sustain ammonium chloride, to obtain ammonium chloride from a mixture of sand and ammonia chloride, that's sublimation. Okay, although afterwards you can call it deposition. Deposition is the opposite of sublimation. We we'll get to question three. Question three: The figure below shows the uh, the magnesium ion in the ionic bonding in magnesium oxide. Write the atomic number of magnesium. Atomic number is twelve. Okay. Despite the loss of two electrons, atomic number means the number of protons. So it's twelve. And the number of electrons is only equal to the number of protons if the atom is neutral. Number B, determine the valency of magnesium. Valency is 2. I got this from there. And even the group where uh, magnesium comes from is group 2. I uh, write the chemical formula of the compound formed when magnesium reacts with chlorine gas. That's magnesium chloride. Okay. Uh, state any two physical properties of the compound formed in C above. It is solid at RTP. It's crystalline in nature and has a high melting point. 2 grams of sodium hydroxide are dissolved in 500 cubic centimeters of distilled water. The resulting solution is an is then added to iron 3 chloride. Okay, write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between sodium hydroxide and iron 3 chloride including state symbols. The 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 the, the what? The Equation is this one sodium hydroxide reacts with iron 3 chloride giving us sodium chloride and iron hydroxide a solid Okay, iron hydroxide is insoluble in Water then the next part to the right one visible observation from the reaction a reddish precipitate PPT is formed Which is actually this iron hydroxide number B calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide in moles per decimeter I was almost starting to calculate in grams per decimeter but i realized quickly that they wanted more so i cancelled this part then i converted the mass we are told that two grams these two grams here is simply i converted to moles giving me 0 0.05 moles over uh half decimeter i convert my 500 uh, cubic centimeters to uh decimeters or liters giving me that therefore the concentration comes as 0 0.1 molar Question 5. Define an endothermic reaction. A reaction that absorbs heat from its surroundings. That's endothermic. Or a reaction that requires you or the supply of heat to eat for it to take place. Number B. Study the reaction below. Iron plus sulfur gives me iron sulfide. Iron 2 sulfide. Explain why the above reaction qualifies to be an endothermic reaction. Because heat is supplied for the iron sulfide to be formed. Then number C. Uh, one state one natural process that takes place in plants that is classified as endothermic photosynthesis It absorbs energy in form of light and also warmth Number two write the chemical equation for the reaction in C above My equation is uh, water plus carbon dioxide in the presence of light gives me uh, glucose or simple sugar plus oxygen 
that's the the reaction of photosynthesis so this light here is actually energy okay, energy number six the graph below shows how the mass of a lamp of a marble chip immersed in dilute hydrochloric acid varied with time okay the mass you can tell from the graph there that the, this is mass and that is time in minutes therefore the initial mass was 2.5 uh, grams and then time was in minutes so at the beginning that was our mass then we go to the question how long after the start was the reaction complete it was just two minutes approximately two minutes from this point here to there it's two minutes after afterwards the mass remains constant the mass remained constant uh, with time Right away, the equation for the reaction and that took place calcium plus hydrochloric acid, calcium carbonate gives us calcium chloride plus carbon dioxide plus water. Then using the graph show, shown above, determine the amount of marble chips that is in excess. Marble chips in excess is this 5 gram. They must remain at 5 grams constantly, meaning this much did not react, meaning the acid finished and then the mass remains constant with time. D, calculate the volume of the gas um, produced, therefore, at RTP. Volume of gas produced, I looked at them uh, in the equation. Uh, we have, um, okay, I can, I mean, let me try and show you the equation here. In the equation, we have a uh, calcium carbonate here uh, giving us one more of calcium gives one more of um, carbon dioxide. Therefore, this is, the, the molar mass of calcium is 100 and the molar mass of uh, carbon dioxide is 44. Therefore, from my relation here, I'm having one more which is 100 grams gives 144 grams of um, hydro, carbon dioxide. Therefore, 2 grams of calcium should be able to give me X. When I cross multiply, uh, my X value comes out as 0 0.88 grams of carbon dioxide will be produced by the, the 2 grams, or no, not even the 2 grams, but by the, by the, by the, you know, in the reaction. So I have these grams, I convert these grams to moles, these are the moles, then I convert these moles to volume using this formula. Number of moles is equals to volume over molar volume. I simply apply this 24 decimeters, decimeter cubic, which is my volume at RRTP multiplied by, um, you know, number of moles. The number of moles gives me 0 0.21 decimeters or 0 0.21 liters of gas was produced in the experiment. Question 7. Uh, below is a diagram showing part of a periodic table. The letters used are not uh, true chemical symbols. We've got A there, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, as you go to in this direction, the metallic symbol, um, the metallic character among elements increases. As you go down in any group again, the metallic character also increases. But among the non-metals, as you go in this direction, the non-metallic character increases. And as you go up in the group, in any group, the non-metallic character also increases. That is why the most reactive metal is down here, down in group one, the least one, there's cesium. Francium is ignored, it's radioactive, but cesium. And the most reactive non-metal is up there, fluorine. Using the letters only, choose the element which has the highest density, the transition element here, C. Using this, using, I mean, is used in high light intensity bulbs, F. Okay, these are my, uh, noble gases. Uh, from an ion with 2 plus charge, forms an ion with 2 plus charge. You look at the group 2, any group 2 element there, okay, because I've said 2 plus. Um, used in... Using the letter D, write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction of the element D with oxygen. When you look at D here, it's just after the transition groups. So this is group 1, group 2, group 3. Okay, therefore the valency of this guy is 3. So the compound that would be formed here would be like that of aluminium oxide. Okay, like that of aluminium oxide. Therefore D plus oxygen gives you D2. This is the 2 here. And O3, oxygen 3. When you balance this, it gives you this here. Question 8, which is our second last in this section. When excess zinc powder is added to aqueous copper to sulfate, the temperature of the mixture rises. What type of reaction does the temperature uh, what type of reaction does the temperature rise suggest? Exothermic. Exothermic. Number B, write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between zinc powder and copper to sulfate. This would be the reaction here. Okay, so zinc displaces copper from this compound and copper precipitates to form a solid like this one, while less zinc stays in aqueous. Number two, an ionic equation for the reaction, therefore this is zinc. Uh, zinc gets oxidized to this and then copper gets reduced to that.
okay then number c there give one example of the type of reaction stated in a in nature respiration okay they've said in a where's a this one exothermic um respiration in tissue you can even say combustion respiration they give out heat they are they are exothermic in nature number nine our last question in this section global warming is as a result of pollution in the environment a thin layer of ozone or three is present high in the atmospheres in the earth's atmosphere not atmospheres not atmospheres earth uh, one, why is the ozone layer important in humans, uh, in terms of human health? Uh, prevents UVB, okay, UVA and UVB um, rays from reaching us, okay. Um, UV radiation has capacity to cause skin cancer and cataracts in our eyes. So that was my explanation. Number two, explain the dangers of depleting ozone layer. It takes time to repair and thus UV radiation would cause ionization in a lot of biological systems or mutations. Okay, once you deplete it, it takes time to rebuild itself. That's the danger because it will mean the effects of UV will be, um, uh, will, have, will take uh, course over a long period of time and you have effect number b there are uh, chloro chlorofluorocarbons okay cfc's uh catalyze the conversion of ozone to oxygen write the equation for this reaction so you've got uh, i've put an example there of um two chloro two fluoromethane okay plus oxygen which is trioxygen it gives you a radical like this guy here and oxygen gas and also this radical here okay so that's how um uh this or oh, this is an example of an equation where ozone is uh, split by chlorofluorocarbon these radicals are highly reactive and unstable so they rebuild themselves and then keep on attacking ozone there are other equations that would follow but that's the equation there uh number three they suggest two ways as to how containment or maybe contamination of the atmosphere will by cfc's can be minimized you simply reduce the use of cfc's and then number two there my answer is educate people on the importance of ozone so you can actually minimize once people know the importance of ozone and you also work on the reduction of release of these um hello alkanes or cfc's then you actually have a better uh, maintenance on our uh, ozone so for this section i end here the next video will simply be on section c or for section c for this same paper i'll see you in that video have a good study time